good morning everybody now today's topic is a role of anesthesiologist and challenges in a pediatric bronchoscopy now anesthesia for bronchoscopy poses an unique challenge for an anesthesiologist the procedure need a specific technical precision because both the surgeon and the anesthesiologist share the same working space that is the airway and hence a team effort is very important there should be a good communication and a cooperation between the surgeon and the anesthesiologist preferably a senior ENT surgeon and an expert anesthesiologist should be present during the procedure so what are the challenges we face in rigid bronchoscopy now usually what we face is a fighting and irritable child with full stomach difficulty or barely maintaining a oxygen saturation and of course there will be a difficulties pertaining to the pediatric airway like the large tongue the large uh, occiput anteriorly placed larynx and so on and so the goals of anesthesia will be to maintain adequate oxygenation a good iv assess in case of any emergency control of the cardio respiratory reflexes during the bronchoscopy rapid return of the airway reflexes once the procedure is over prevention of any pulmonary aspiration meticulous monitoring during the procedure proper size bronchoscopes and proper forceps should be kept ready before the procedures check for the light source and the suction before starting the procedure and if uh, organic foreign body is suspected then always keep a tracheostomy trolley ready now pre operative consideration a rigid bronchoscopy almost always required a general anesthesia and hence it requires a standard pre operative assessment of course if the time permits like the diagnostic procedure in or in case of an adult but when a pediatric foreign body is suspected then a pre operative assessment should determine whether the aspirated foreign body has been lodged if it is lodged in the trachea there will be a risk of complete obstruction and child may present with a respiratory distress and should be taken to the theater urgently then what was aspirated a organic material can absorb a fluid and swell oil from the nerves causes a localized inflammation a sharp object can pierce the airway and aspiration of coconut like things can really be a messy now the time of the last meal should be established to assess the risk of the aspiration if the patient is not fasting and the procedure is urgent injection of nonsetron and ranitidine with metoclopramide can be given preoperatively in urgent cases um, stomach can be aspirated through a nasogastric tube x-ray chest gives us a lot of idea whether the lung is over inflated emphysematous or collapse this is the over inflated lungs also airway patency should be assessed if the child is in severe distress the foreign body may be at the glottis opening and uh, such a child should be taken to the theater immediately now there are mainly three wall mechanisms are described the bypass mechanism the check wall mechanism and the stop wall mechanism now in case of a bypass mechanism there will be a partial obstruction of the airway the airway will be expanded during the inspiration and the expiration and the expiration both occurs there will be no collapse or emphysema and in this system if the foreign body is radiolucent it we may base the foreign body on the x rays in case of a check wall mechanism the inspiration occurs but during the expiration the foreign body gets embedded into the into the mucosa which will be swollen due to the inflammation and there will be air trapping leading to the obstructive emphysema in case of a stop wall mechanism both the inspiration and the expiration will be stopped and there will be absorption of the air from the lung so there will be a collapse or the atelectasis pre medications anti clo clocks like the atropine 10 microgram per kg Uh, or a glycopyrrolate 5 microgram per kg iv or im can be given 30 to 60 ml before the procedure it helps to decrease the secretions during the rigid bronchoscopy steroids like the hydrocortisone or dexamethasone can be given prophylactically to decrease the laryngeal edema and decrease the post operative stridor 
benzodiazepines generally should be avoided or judiciously used as it may precipitate a total airway obstructions bronchodilators in the preoperative period is less likely to be useful patient is usually kept in the supine position at the edge of the table and the head is extended by keeping the sandbag or a shoulder roll now head is placed on a ring with a chin placing upward and this is called as a shaving chin position intraoperative monitoring now standard monitoring should be followed which include a ecg pulse oximeter nibp etcu2 usually is not required if you choose a is a spontaneous ventilation method ventilation in a patient with rigid bronchoscopy is a challenging task and especially in a child presenting with foreign body usually have a borderline pulmonary status now there are various reported strategies out of that apneic oxygenation it is basically this technique is usually based on denitrogenation with 100% oxygen and a muscle relaxation with the use of short acting neuromuscular blockers now this approach of the ventilation is mainly historical interest as largely been abandoned by most of the center except for a very brief procedure in a selected patients manual jet ventilation is consist of a hand operated valve connected to 100% oxygen and a pressure limiting valve here we give around 10 to 16 breaths per minute high frequency jet ventilation uses an automated system at a respiratory rate substantially higher than the physiological rates that is between 60 to 300 breaths per minute now unavailability of both the manual and the automatic jet ventilation and most of the center left us with two options either the control ventilation or a spontaneous ventilation the choice of the ventilation technique should be determined by the local expertise and of course the equipment availability control ventilation now in this technique a rigid bronchoscope acts like a endotracheal tube to provide an inhaled anesthetic agent passed by the positive pressure ventilation down the bronchoscope via the side arm of the bronchoscope with intermittent apnea for manipulating the objects may be more suitable for a distal foreign body removal this technique can be challenging to perform due to operating characteristic of common anesthetic equipment now a spontaneous respiration alternatively a patient patient spontaneous respiration is maintained and oxygen will be supplied through a side arm of the bronchoscope now now i have already told you the choice of ventilation will depend upon the local expertise and of course the equipment availability at the center now there are some advantages of a control ventilation a rapid sequence induction allows more rapid and control of the airway lessening the chances of aspiration again the positive pressure ventilation avoids hypoxemia and improves the oxygenation it is essential to avoid a coughing and bucking secondary to the intense stimulation from a rigid bronchoscope deep into the tracheobronchial tree and hence a patient mobility will be easier to maintain now, there will be a possibility of more rapid emergence since the neuromuscular blockers can blocking can be monitored allowing the administration of lower doses of an iv anesthetic agent now control ventilation is associated with some kind of a disadvantages control ventilation leads to the over distension of the obstructed lung which may can embrace the cardiovascular system and may cause rupture of the alveoli resulting into the tension pneumothorax positive airway pressure may cause distal migration of the foreign body there may be dislodgement of the foreign body peripherally and it may also cause failure to remove the foreign body it is important to note that if a control ventilation is selected an adequate time should be given for exhalation through a high resistance bronchoscope in order to prevent the air trapping and a barotrauma now ventilation must be done in concerned with the bronchoscopic ventilation ventilating when the bronchoscope is open will ventilate the room excessive suctioning during the procedure can markedly diminish the oxygen concentration at the distal end of the bronchoscope and it may also induce a atelectasis therefore suctioning must be applied for a short period of time and should be followed by active lung inflation now pull back the distal end of the bronchoscope in the main trachea during the active ventilation this will help to ventilate both the lungs 
there are certainly more advantages of a spontaneous respiration these are the more effective alveolar ventilation with the difficulty in positive pressure ventilation and anesthesiologists typically exert more pressure for the patient with airway compromise and this result in more turbulence in the upper airway and less effective air exchange downstream now better ventilation perfusion matching better ventilation when the bronchoscope window is closed better ventilation even when the bronchoscope window is open because the patient will at least breathe air and a situation called as a foreign body mimic not every patient believed to have a foreign body even if this rider is present actually has one and if there, if there is a doubt then spontaneous ventilation should be preserved in order to make a diagnosis you can always convert the patient from spontaneous ventilation to a patient with controlled ventilation Neuromuscular blockade may worsen the situation by converting the patient with a compromised airway to a patient with no airway. And in case of a multiple placement of the forceps, in case of a difficult foreign body, difficult to grasp foreign body with the forceps may cause the gases to exhaust to the room rather than deliver to the patient during the control ventilation unless the window is completely replaced or closed. Spontaneous ventilation is also associated with some kind of a disadvantages and these are sometimes the foreign body may be too large to be withdrawn through the lumen of the bronchoscope and at such situation we have to withdraw both the bronchoscope with the foreign body and it is common to lose the foreign body during the removal which commonly occurs at the subglottic region if the muscle relaxation is not adequate and this is known to occur with a spontaneous technique. Another thing is halothane, mostly outdated agent, not used uh, commonly these days, but if used, can cause decrease in myocardial contractility. There may be increase in CO2 and hypercarbia, and there will not be any hard guarantee that no movement. Therefore, additional airway trauma may occur in a spontaneous respiration. There will be a prolonged emergence due to very high concentration of an inhaled anesthetic agent used. And last but not least, there will be an emergence delirium with the anesthetic agent seoflurane if it is used. Now coming to the anesthesia technique. Ideal anesthesia requires hypnosis, analgesia and a muscle relaxation. Now, anesthesia technique is partially dictated by the selected ventilation strategy. For example, if you select a spontaneous technique, then a gas anesthetic uh, like the seoflurane will be a preferred induction agent. Halothane being the outdated due to high incidence of a cardiac arrhythmia, isoflurane being the respiratory irritant should be avoided. If a control ventilation is selected and propofol automated along with fentanyl and a muscle relaxant uh, is a very good combination and uh, nitrous oxide should be judiciously used because in case of a over distended lung or emphysematous lung this may cause over distension of the lung, rupture of the alveoli and may lead to the tension pneumothorax. Anesthetic consideration, the vocal cord should be sprayed with 10% lignocaine to prevent the post-operative laryngospasm. Short-acting muscle relaxation or intermittent scolene can be used if the foreign body are too large. Now, target control infusion as a part of TIVA may be used. After extraction of the foreign body and the removal of the rigid bronchoscope, the choice of ventilation during the emergence is influenced by pulmonary gas exchange and a degree of air may edema. For an uncomplicated cases, spontaneous respiration assisted with a mask ventilation may be adequate. Intubation during the emergence may be indicated for a marginal airway, pulmonary compromise or if there is any residual blockage. Now if there is any residual neuromuscular block then it should be reversed with a neostigmine and a glycopyrrolate combination. Post-operative care. Now it is advisable to keep the patient in a humid atmosphere and watch for any respiratory distress. Recovery is as important as the induction of the anesthesia. 5 to 10 percent of the children may require some kind of a emergency intervention at this stage. It is essential that the muscle relaxation should be completely reversed before the patient shifted to the recovery room. Monitoring should be done in the recovery room for a couple of hours. Post-operative pain is usually of a laryngeal origin and respond to simple analgesics. For children with a strider in the post-operative period, steroids like the hydrocortisone or dexamethasone can be given if not given in the preoperative or intraoperatively. Post-operative nebulization and bronchodilators may help in the post-operative strider. 
Complications of a legit bronchoscopy may be trauma to the lips, teeth, base of the tongue, epiglottis, even a larynx. There may be a severe cardiovascular embarrassment and even a cardiac arrest may follow due to tracheobronchial manipulations and suction. There may be laryngospasm or a bronchospasm, pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, atelectasis and strider secondary to the subglottic edema. Fiber optic bronchoscopy. Like fiber optic bronchoscope is an excellent diagnostic tool. No general anesthesia is needed. It is done under local with or without sedation. And when a situation like a foreign body might make, it is very important tool to diagnose a foreign body, the type of the foreign body, the placement of the foreign body. There are reports of a successful removal of the foreign body through a fiber optic bronchoscope. Remember that not all foreign bodies can be removed endoscopically. Take a call and refer the patient for a bronchotomy if you are unable to remove the foreign body. To conclude, normal chest x-ray does not rule out the foreign body. Bronchoscopy should be performed if a foreign body aspiration is suspected because it is better to do a negative bronchoscopy rather than missing a foreign body. And now in an era where we are of a fiber optic bronchoscope, it is always better to do a fiber optic bronchoscopy whenever a foreign body is suspected, if it is available. There is no consensus from the literature as to which technique is optimal, whether the spontaneous ventilation or a controlled ventilation is optimal. Be ready and equipped to convert from one method of ventilation to the another method of ventilation. Don't turn a non-obstructive foreign body into an obstructive one by administering a neuromuscular blocking agent. And don't miss a second body, second foreign body, go back and have another look. Last but not the least, not all foreign bodies can be removed endoscopically. Take a call and refer the patient for the bronchotomies. Thank you.